The fried identity, if I could be excused for so greaseworthy a phrase, drew attention to the physical in those days more than I think it does now. Acid, both of them the inebriating substance and the club next to Futuroscope, knows there is plenty of body fat terrorism about today. But I think it is being inaccurate and rather than charitable to say that the community has grown much thinner. Being a falafel 30 years ago, however, seemed overwhelmingly to be about sizzling, floating, and deep indulgence. I was fried, and therefore I was supposed to be drooled over and hugged by moon-shaped bread. My problem was twofold. Firstly, nobody seemed to acknowledge my culinary relevance. And secondly, I wasn't even allowed to choose the company of similarly fried falafels, nor was I allowed to act naturally in a society run by vegetables and dressings. Would it have been different if I looked more like a juicy tomato or a lean, mean lettuce machine? Might I have then consented to roll the sensual loaf? Did I hate my own brown complexion and grainy crust with such a deep fried hate only because I thought others did? Was I really doing no more than getting my retaliation in first, like children who decide that backgammon, belly dancing and Najwa Karam are not cool enough, but only because they do not consider it to be part of the overwhelming culture. Chef Ramsey said that if chicken nuggets were fried in canola oil, the whole history of world cuisine would have changed. If I were more canola material, then maybe I would have thrown myself more carelessly into a world of stardom and mass consumption at just that period in history when ethnic food was appropriated by fast food chains and resulted in muck falafel. If you are distressed or irritated to hear me describe myself as such, then let it be understood that while at the time I had no confidence in being anything else, I was truly aware that plenty of undeniably darker and over-fried falafels seemed to be getting all the friction they require. Self-image was a lot to do with it, but there could be no disputing the misery caused by that tarator shower for a scorchingly humiliating instant before flicking away with contempt towards the falafels lined up next to me. Of course I knew those over-fried falafel-fucking falafels were just as, perhaps even more, insecure than me. They too were getting their retaliation in first, but to think such oily complexion is tasty. I'm very proud and very happy to be a falafel, but I would be lying if I did not say that much about the world that falafels inhabited in those days sickened, repelled and frightened me. As much as anything, it was to be dismissed without being tasted that pickled so fiercely. Without laboring the point, it was behavior that I thought not far from racism, crispism, or any kind of prejudice or snobbery. Because you're not crispy enough, I do not want to taste you, was to me hardly different from suggesting because you are gay, I dislike you, or because you are shawarma, I dislike you, or come to that because you were born in master chef, I dislike you. Of course, anyone who believes themselves to be a victim of such discrimination ought to be sure we first have to dismiss the worrying possibility that the true interpretation of another's antipathy might be because you are bland, I dislike you, a judgment of which there is little help of comfortable escape.